What's good, Kaz? Welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm bringing you my first MLB The Show 22 video. What do you mean, MLB The Show 22? It's November, but we're talking MLB The Show 22 today. It's never too early to talk about the new game. Obviously, going to be coming out in a few months in April or March, depending on when the game is announced, when we get the release date. did come out in April this year. Hopefully, it comes out in March next year. But Gomes the Legend dropped a video yesterday that I watched that I really, really liked, talking about some ideas that they should add in MLB The Show 22. So I'm taking some of his ideas, going to be talking about them in today's video i'll drop the link for his video in the description down below and i also have a bunch of new ideas that i thought of that no one's talked about yet that i would like to see in the game so if you're excited for this one do me a favor hit that like button hit that subscribe button if you're new i would greatly appreciate it but without further ado i hope you'll enjoy the video and let's get it Minica, watch me on Twitch. Ooh, I'm streaming. I'm on YouTube. Subscribe to the channel. Red button beaming. Let's get that sub count. Take over YouTube. Ooh, we teaming. My content so high. Ooh, yeah, I'm steaming. Ooh, yeah, I'm steaming. Red button beaming. Okay, everyone, I'm here on MLB The Show 21, and before we talk MLB The Show 22 ideas, what I want to say about MLB The Show 21, the content year is not over, just slowing down a little bit. We do have the World Series program tomorrow, which I will be covering in two videos. We'll be breaking down the program, and then going to have debuts for you all. We will have TA5 coming in a couple of weeks, a new inning program, but we are slowing down when it comes to content, so I thought this would be a great time to bring in some MLB The Show 22 ideas that I hope they bring into the game next year. That would add some new things into the game next year that I would really like to see. MLB The Show 21, though, I've had a ton of fun with this game the entire year. My first year making content for this game. My first year playing this game consistently through the entire year, but I watched Gomes The Legend video yesterday that I talked about in the intro. If you haven't seen it, definitely go check that one. And he talked about a lot of good things that they should add or take away for next year's game. So make sure to go check out Gomes' video. And I am going to talk about some of the things that he talked about in that video with some other ideas of my own that he did not talk about that I would like to see. But the first thing I I want to talk about is something that Gomes did talk about and that is theme teams. If you don't know what a theme team is, they've been in Madden for a long time now and theme teams are great because if you're a fan of a certain team that might not have great cards, let's take for example this Philadelphia Phillies Jimmy Rollins card. No one's going to use this Jimmy Rollins for the most part at this point in the game because there are way better shortstop options than Jimmy Rollins. He came out in Team Affinity Season 4, doesn't have the best contact, doesn't have the best power. He has great speed, he has great fielding stats but he's just not good at the plate at this point in the year. This would make you want to use this Jimmy Rollins card if you wanted to run a Phillies theme team. Now, if you run all Phillies across your entire lineup, your starting rotation, your bullpen, I'm not sure what the requirements would be if you have to use every single card in your lineup rotation bullpen for the Philadelphia Phillies, or maybe you have to fill half the team with Phillies players. Maybe they get a boost in their contact. Give him a boost in his power, his speed, his fielding, something that would make you want to use this Jimmy Rollins card if you ran a Phillies theme team, because you're going to see a lot of people at this point in the year, this card is pretty much useless. Not a lot of people using him when there are way better short stop options but if you take into account theme teams and they get a boost for using this jimmy rollins card some people might actually throw him into their lineup and you're going to see a lot more theme teams online which would give a lot more lineup diversity than going into ranked seasons and playing the exact same team every single ranked seasons game every single team at this point has a chipper jones has a mookie Betts, has a vlad has a mickey mantle you're playing the same teams over and over a theme team would add some diversity onto ranked seasons give different boosts to different teams where the Phillies get power, whether they get contact, whether they get speed, whether they get a fielding boost, just something that would want to make you use this Jimmy Rollins card. And this would be the same for every single MLB team. If you want to give the Yankees a power boost, you want to give a fielding boost to the best fielding team in the league, you can customize them throughout the entire year. I think this would be a great idea to throw into Diamond Dynasty to get some diversity in people's lineups for ranked seasons because I'm sick of playing the same exact lineup every single game and i think it would be even better if they don't just make them mlb theme teams because we have so many different cards in diamond dynasty we have awards cards player of the month cards all-star game cards milestone cards make those theme teams as well you see a full team of mvp cards maybe you give them a boost in every single category speed fielding power contact but not as much as a theme team built around power or speed fielding etc i think that would be a really cool idea and i really hope they bring theme teams into the game next year now the next thing i want to talk about and something i think they should do next year let me know in the comments down below how you feel about this one because i feel like it's going to be a little controversial is lower the overall card ratings for the live series cards day one now the reason i want to do this and ea does it with madden they do it with nhl they make the best players in their game 88 89 overall cards i would 
would probably make Trout if he's the best player in the MLB. In your opinion, I think he is a 92, 93 overall. I think 88, 89, a little too low is because we have a full year of content planned for Madden, for NHL, for MLB. Why would I keep playing the game throughout the entire year when Mike Trout is a 96 overall day one and we're going to get 99 overall cards in July? We got a 99 Jacob DeGrom in Team Affinity Season 2 in July. We had a 99 Vlad Jr., 99 Freddy Peralta in July. Why would someone keep playing this game when they could have a full 99 team by August, September? They're not going to be playing into November or December unless you're a diehard baseball fan like myself and you really like the game. But the casual audience, the casual player that already has a 99 overall team isn't going to stick around to November and December. Wait for 99 Babe Ruth. Wait for 99 Mike Trout because already they feel like they beat the game. There's no more reason for them to play this game. They're going to go play Madden, NHL, FIFA when those games come out because they feel like they did all they need to do in MLB The Show 21. So like I said, I think they should lower the overalls for the live series cards day one. Obviously, they're live series cards, so they can go up and they can go down. So eventually, if Mike Trout gets to a 99 overall, that's cool. But day one, he should not be that high or whoever you think the best player in the MLB is because that means we are just going to get 99 overall cards way too early in the game. And I think we shouldn't be getting 99 overall cards until September, October when playoffs roll around because that's going to keep people invested because they want to get a 99 overall team. Now, the next thing I want to talk about as we head over to rank season. Now, rank seasons, battle royale, they're great, but they're only two modes. And rank seasons, kind of like we're talking about the live series cards, every rank seasons, once you get into World Series division, there is not much of an incentive to keep playing to get to the 1000 ratings, the 1100 ratings, and the 1200 range. You're going to get a few packs, but what is that really going to do? Once you get the World Series reward, and once you finish the BR program, there's not many rewards to keep playing those programs. So what I think we need is a third mode to play. BR is great to play casually. If you go 12 and 0, I know a lot of people cannot go 12 and 0, and they're not going to get those great live series cards, so they're not going to be playing Battle Royale. They're just going to keep playing ranked seasons. I think we need a third mode, and that third mode can be similar to Weekend League in FIFA, in NHL, and in Madden. If you don't know what Weekend League is, they're basically 20 to 25 games that MLB can customize them because obviously MLB games are longer than NHL, Madden, or FIFA games. MLB games take 45 minutes to an hour, whereas an NHL game a Madden game takes like 20 minutes to 30 minutes. So MLB games are much, much longer than those other games that I talked about. But maybe 15 games, 15 nine-inning games. Weekend League is a very competitive, sweaty mode. Now, you don't have to play Weekend League if you're the casual player. You can keep playing ranked seasons, try to make World Series Division, or you can play BR. That's completely okay. But if you're a very competitive player and you've done everything there is to do, you've gone 12-0, you've made World Series, why not play Weekend League every single week, 15 games, nine innings, try to get yourself to the number one spot on the leaderboard and earn exclusive cards, earn stub rewards. And even if you're not the best MLB The Show player in the world, you don't have to be the top rank, top 100, top 1,000, maybe top 10,000 is where you would rank. Maybe you could still earn some free packs, some free stubs, some free cards. Why wouldn't you play it if you've already done rank seasons, if you've already done Battle Royale? It gives somebody another option to keep playing the game every single week, every single weekend to earn exclusive rewards that you can't get in rank seasons and you can't get in Battle Royale. And that would be pretty cool if you place in the top 100 and you get yourself an exclusive card that no one else has unless they place in the top 100 in weekend league in rank seasons again that will lead to team diversity that's what i talked about with the theme teams you're seeing cards that normally you do not see and you know you're about to play a really good player i definitely think weekend league or a more competitive mode is something that they need in next year's game because if you look at the leaderboard for ranked seasons what does it really matter that you're placed number one overall in ranked seasons you get no extra bonus you get no packs you get no stubs for being number one weekend league would change that now the next thing i want to talk about could be a little controversial as well so let me know how you feel about this one but i think something that'd be really cool in the game would be selling your parallel version of a car what do i mean by that okay so let's say day one you get mike trout and you're the first person ever to get a one of one parallel five Mike Trout. Now that is awesome. You're probably going to be using Mike Trout on your team for a long, long time. But what if you want to sell that one of one parallel five Mike Trout that no one else has in the game for more of a value than base Mike Trout with no parallel? Because as you know, if you have a parallel five card, that gives them a plus five boost in every single category, contact, power, speed, fielding, etc. So why wouldn't you want to be rewarded with more stubs if you chose to sell your Mike Trout on the marketplace, your parallel five Mike Trout? Because 
stubs. What if base live series Mike Trout day one has gone for 500,000 stubs? If you're somebody that put in the work, really grinded to get your power level five Mike Trout, who's to say you shouldn't be rewarded with 700,000 stubs or more stubs if somebody is willing to pay for it? Because there are a lot of reasons that people can't get the power levels done. They don't have the time to grind out the work ethic, but if they have time to grind the market, flip some cards and get the stubs, why can't they go on the market and buy a parallel five trout? I think that'd be a really cool idea. It will help people make more stubs on people that grind, get these cards to parallel five and then sell them. And it will also help the people that don't have time to grind to get these cards to parallel five that flip cards on the market, really grind programs to get more stubs, be able to go on the market and just buy out a parallel five Mike Trout. The next thing I want to talk about would be X Factor players. So if you've played Madden, you've played NHL, you've played FIFA, you know what X Factor players are. And I think that's something, again, that will bring people to use different cards for different reasons and really bring diversity to everybody's lineup and make a card stand out above the rest. Let's take 99 Chipper Jones, for example. He has great quirks. He's a great card. He's one of the best cards in the game still, but a lot of these quirks, a lot of other cards have. There's nothing that this Chipper Jones has that really stands out above the other cards in the quirks category. Yeah, he's a switch hitting back, great contact, great power, good fielding, good speed. He's a great card, but I'm talking strictly quirks here. I'm not talking his hitting stats, his fielding stats, his speed. I think something that'd be really cool is if you get this Chipper Jones card, he has an X factor ability. Let's say Chipper Jones gets two base hits in the same game. Maybe for his third at bat, he gets a plus 10 power boost. Maybe if he hits two home runs in the beginning of the game, he gets a plus 10 contact boost. And that could be done with a lot of different cards with a lot of different reasons. Let's say you have a Mookie Betts card that's great in the field. Maybe you want to give him an X factor or a superstar ability. He makes two great defensive plays in the field. Maybe he gets a defensive X factor where he's not going to allow any balls to get past him. Maybe he gets a plus five reaction time. Maybe he gets a plus five arm. Something that really makes these cards stand out above the rest. All the other games have X factor abilities. I think the quirks are all right, but honestly, the casual fan base doesn't really know what the quirks do. X factors really to make these cards stand out and people would know what the X factors would do. One of the last things I would like to talk about in this video is maybe getting more rights for more legends going forward for future years of the game because people know every single year there's a 99 Lou Gehrig coming out, 99 Babe Ruth, 99 Mickey Mantle, and so on. We know the great legends that are going to be coming out in this game, but if we can get more rights, more people will be playing because if there's a 99 Derek Jeter coming out at the end of the year in the playoffs, I'm waiting to the playoffs to play this game to get 99 Derek Jeter. If we can get more rights for more legends, that will keep people more invested for the rest of the year. And the last thing I want to talk about in this video, I hope they're able to do this because I think it should be pretty easy to implement and would be really effective. And that is searching for an online game, whether that be ranked seasons, battle royale, or events by setting your connection level. That way, if you have great connection, you can match up with somebody that's going to have equal connection to you. And if you have bad connection, unfortunately, you'll match up with somebody else with bad connection. This would just avoid people lagging because we're not playing on dedicated servers. And Gomes the Legend talked about that in his video. And I have great connection. I don't want to lag because my peer to peer connection is bad. So I definitely think they should should add that into the game where you can search for your connection type based on your connection. Okay, everyone, that's gonna do it for the video today. These are some things I think they should implement in MLB The Show 22. Obviously, we have a long way until MLB The Show 22, at least four to five months until the new game comes out in the off season, January, February, we'll definitely be talking more MLB The Show 22. And when they announce the game, I'll be bringing you guys all the details for that game on the channel. So if you're new here, make sure to hit that subscribe button, drop a like on the video if you enjoyed it and you found it useful in the comments down below also let me know what would you like to see in mlb the show 22 next year make sure to follow me at my social links which are on the screen for you all right now including my twitter tiktok instagram twitch stuff like that but that's good for me today everyone i will see you on the next video have a great rest of your day peace out